once mid-December hits, there are really only two types of people. The people who spend the holidays with their families, you know, whether that's their kid or their pet or, um, you know, even their friends. And then there's, well, then there's the rest of us. Just kind of alone, drifting by utilizing whatever vices we happen to have near us. Whether we like to admit it or not. I knew that this year I would have to be a lost drifter. So, I went to New York to learn the uh, true meaning of Christmas. Or whatever. Santa didn't ask me what I wanted for Christmas this year, but um, even if he did, I'm not sure I would have known what to tell him. I mean, what I want is a pretty, pretty big question. I think wanting implies a lack of something. Desire may be a teacher, but more by accident than by design. I don't want to want the wrong thing. I don't want the story that I tell about myself to be the wrong story. Merry Christmas, Mimi. <laughs> what do you think of your of your lavish, your lavish life. <laughs> yes, I can tell you're very neglected and you never get fed. <laughs> Her story and she's gonna stick to it. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing I want for Christmas is to be content with my aloneness. You know, in the sense that I don't wanna feel discarded, but you know, useful doing my own thing. Content. But I also had an opposingly different desire to feel human connection, especially on Christmas Day, watching everybody walk arm in arm with someone. I just felt like I was the only person who was walking alone. Luckily, it was pretty easy to remedy my loneliness. Hello! But I do wonder if human connection comes at a cost. Like a lot of New Yorkers, for Christmas I want COVID to go away. Unfortunately, when I booked my flight two weeks ago, that was before Omicron. There are a lot of people in the world who like to pretend that COVID isn't a bad thing. Just like there are a lot of people who like to pretend that it's actually not winter. Yeah, it might be December, but also it's sort of spring. Unfortunately, the tri-state area was very rainy for Christmas. But like COVID, weather is hard to predict and when there's a wave, you just have to ride it out the best you can. For some people, that might mean finding human connection in any way you can. And hey, I'm not... I'm not judging. For other people, that might mean reflecting on the nature of love as an infinite energy, rather than a finite idea to long for, like by personifying love in the form of cliches, like the one who got away. Luckily, like all feelings, the feeling of loneliness is only temporary. And soon enough, it'll be walking 
along with someone, or, or not. Maybe you have better things to worry about, like going to work. Maybe the best way to enjoy Christmas is just by wanting something achievable. Like, instead of wanting to know the future, you could just want to find your mitzvah. The word mitzvah refers to an individual act of human kindness. And for me, my Christmas mitzvah was deep cleaning my aunt's stove. And her mitzvah was hosting me in the time of COVID. It's easier to feel cheer on Christmas <laughs> when nice. you have someone to share that cheer with. I'm lucky because I got the best of both worlds this Christmas. Well, the best of all worlds. I got to have my alone time and my together time with family. I got to pet two cats, one dog, and I got to wake up in Manhattan and I'm going to go to bed in deep Brooklyn. Where I get to cat sit for one of my favorite writers in a really beautiful apartment. So if the secret to enjoying Christmas is a matter of privilege, well, I have that in spades. And if it's a matter of attitude, I'm working on that. Maybe learning to enjoy Christmas is the same as learning to enjoy life. You just have to sift through the bullshit and find something worthwhile, worth loving.